all right guys welcome back to another sweet tutorial and in this video we're gonna be adding some actual intelligence to our enemy so right now remember in the last tutorial we added a variable to this enemy where it said okay action can equal right and we're also gonna have it so action can equal left but those words need mean nothing to the game so what does it mean when right well doesn't mean go right doesn't mean you know jump up and down is a snail supposed to eat a potato whenever it, its action equals right even though what we know what right means and obviously we want the snail to crawl right we need to tell the game that's what it means so in order to do that hop over to your event sheet and we're gonna add some events the first one is add event and also since there's no bounding box for the snail we can just work directly on the snail object which is makes it a lot easier to explain so the snail enemy and what I want to set now is actually since we're working with an instance variable we want to put compare instance variable so the variable that we just made and the only one we can select which makes it even easier is action so when action is equal to and use uh, quotations right here or quotes when action is equal to right what do I want to do well we just want to have the snail crawl right in other words move right and also use the um, same animation as he's using right now because it's hilarious alright so the action that we want to occur whenever this variable equals right is snail enemy and if you scroll down to platform behavior you're gonna find one that says simulate control right here and we'll just simulate right so basically whenever this variable is right and this is what's gonna happen right now off the bat by default the snail is gonna act like someone was pressing right for him in other words he's gonna crawl right now the only other thing we have to do is make sure that that animation is we go snail set animation and actually did uh, set mirrored right here not mirrored so just like before the not mirrored one is basically the default animation of him looking to the right and humping the ground so right now whenever um, the game starts since this is the default value for the variable he's going to crawl right and use that same animation of him humping the ground so now of course we need to do the same thing for left so add a whole nother event snail enemy where are my instance variables compare instance variables now when the action is equal to left snail enemy simulate control oh, left right there and also add the action of snail enemy or excuse me animation set animation mess that up again Animation, snail enemy. Where the heck is it? Am I just an idiot right now? Right now, appearance. Why is that under appearance? It should not be. Uh, I guess I should. I'm. I guess I am an idiot. <laughs> All right, and mirrored. So basically, right now he's going to be crawling right, and using the same animation. And whenever um, we change the variable, the instance variable, he's going to be crawling left and he's going to be facing the opposite way so his eyes are going to be it's going to look like he's looking left but right now you're thinking okay this looks good the events look good the animations look good however how is that variable actually changed because right now we just put two invisible blocks on the screen we didn't tell the game that when the snail actually comes in contact with this edge marker that's when we want you to change the variable and remember the only other thing that we have to do to get him to turn around is change this action to left once he does that the events will take it from there so how do we do that well we need to add another event of course and the event for this is and we're gonna be doing a couple sub events the first thing that we want to add is the snail enemy did I say snail enemy what the heck is a snail enemy 
So when the snail collides with another object, do something. Well, what do you want to check if the snail collides with? Well, it's this edge marker object right here. So whenever the snail collides with one of these edge markers, this is what we do. We want to click it and hit sub event. And the only other thing we want to do is pretty much change his action. And this is actually really easy. So snail enemy. Not going to be able to find this again. I'm just going to punch my computer screen. Compare instance variable is action equal to right. I'm just going to code this all and then we're going to talk because it's kind of making me um, confused having to type in all this logic. It's now enemy. Instance variable action equal to left. And then we need to add an else. Add action snail enemy. This variable. You guys can probably uh, see what's going on already. Value this equal to right. All right. So hopefully this works. Basically, um, we're telling our game whenever the snail collides with an edge marker, see what their um, instance variable is. If it's equal to right, then change it to left. Else. And we, we could have add is action equal to left, but this else is just a whole lot easier. Else if it's not equal to right, then it must be equal to left. So change it to right. And of course, whenever their action is equal to left or right, it's going to um, make the enemy behave in the proper way as we told it right here and right here. So now let's test this out and check it out. So the snail starts out going right. And hopefully once he gets right here, it says, okay, I collided with that. Now change my action to right, go this way, collided with this, change it back to left, go this way, back and forth and back and forth he goes. So now, of course, we can still run into him and get hurt and also kill him if I can land on him just like before. So again, like I said, this isn't the smartest snail in the world, but that is your very um, basics to artificial intelligence. And uh, that's pretty much like how they made the game like Sonic and Super Mario Brothers, uh, the large majority of the game. That's just how they, I mean, they didn't use the software, but that's pretty much the logic behind it. So for now, now that we got our snail working perfectly, we're ready to move on to the next tutorial. It's going to be awesome. So I'll see you guys then.